screen is good. All right. Welcome everybody to another session. Today we're going to be talking about um, Revit Hatch and Material. So, how many guys use or create their own Hatch and Materials inside Revit? Slowly? No, not yet. <laughs> okay. Uh, it can be very daunting sometimes, but uh, today I'm just going to be talking about how do you create like a simple Hatch, and then how do you do like an import Hatch pattern if you already have one. And I'll probably uh, show you guys how to do like the, like the simple stuff inside the hatch uh, the materials like um, material images and stuff like that. Normally, what I would typically recommend user doing is to do the simple stuff, and don't worry about the hard hard part because hard stuff I would recommend people don't touch it, or you can just ask me and I'll help you out with this. And a couple of tips and tricks. Okay, a couple of things to remember. Well, maybe I should put that in. Uh, a couple of things for uh, Revit hatches. Uh, is it doing anything? Yeah. Okay, good. So, not right now. Go away. Okay, so uh, how many guys use 2019 right now? Okay, only several people. Okay, there is a differences in 2019 and 2018 or older. So if you're using 2019, what happened is that you got you guys are gonna have this to toggle foreground and background. Okay, uh, in the older version, you only get one. Okay, there's a difference between the two. Uh, if you are doing a lot of uh, color elevations, for instance, I'm just gonna go next slide. So what you're able to do is that if let's assume that you have color foreground and background, you're able to take a couple of hatch material, apply like solid color, and when you export that out to either AutoCAD or Illustrators just to do touch-ups and stuff like that, you're able to correctly apply those materials. In the past, it's very difficult to do. There is a couple settings inside 2018 you can actually do it to achieve this look, but it's very, very difficult to get the most accurate color. 19 is a little bit easier. All you have to do is just apply to hidden view and change it to like, let's say your color material, you want the background to be color and the foreground to be like a hatch material, then you're able to export both of those things out very easily. 18 is a bit harder. Okay, so quick material. Um, when you, I think the 2018 and 19, there's not a lot of changes. So the easiest to access material I typically tell user to do is that just click on that little button here, and you have access to a bunch of libraries. I always use the appearance library because that's the defaults for every every version of Revit. Uh, you could create your own materials, uh, but I'll probably show you like easily how to do that. A couple tips and tricks. Um, one thing you kind of have to keep in mind if you're creating your own custom material uh, and you send the files to your consultants or whoever, the materials is not transferable. So basically what you have to do is that you have to manually send that images to the user. And from the user end, they have to double click and edit or they have to add those images into their mapping library okay that's kind of like the one step that Revit hasn't done I wish you know when you export out your project or like e-transmit your project they would include the material with it but unfortunately there is no no way so this is a manual process hopefully in the future uh, if Autodesk listen to us then they'll include this for some reason, Auto, uh, AutoCAD has that functionality. <laughs> That's the funny thing is that Revit said, no, there is no functionality. You have to manually do it. Um, the nicest thing about Revit is that it's using AutoCAD hatch pattern. So if you know AutoCAD hatch pattern, where to get it, you can actually copy and paste it and create your own word to it. The only thing you have to add in in Revit is that you have to add in if you want to do a drafting or t uh, model. Okay. So if you want to uh, put this as a drafting, uh, what it does is that you just have to add this line. I'll, I'll show you later how to do that. Now there's a difference between drafting and model. Drafting means that there is no scale associated with it. So assuming that uh, your drawings is going to change scale, 1 to 100, 1 to 200, or 1 8 or 1 quarter inch, what it does is that it uses those to scale your hatch pattern. Whereas model is require you to use real live, you know, measurements. So let's assume that you have a six inch 
uh, horizontal siding, then you say six inch horizontal sidings. Then your hatch is going to be six inch. The unfortunate about uh, model hatch is that you cannot get smaller than let's for example, I think the minimum uh, threshold is uh, once it gets to um, I believe a quarter inch or less or something, it turns into f like black. It won't display it. So there's a limitation. I think you can get it with uh, one inch is, you can still see it. I, most of the time, if the line thickness is too thick, it will just make it all black. So just be aware of that, right? So what typically I do with the model hatch is um, there is a limit, uh, but you just have to use it uh, dispersely because it's just basically trying to achieve the look that you want. The, the bigger the scale, that small hatch, if you put in like a half an inch, like spacing, the, um, the your elevation is going to be black. So just be aware of that. Okay, there's a couple things. Uh, you can manually rotate the hatch direction with the model hatch and not drafting hatch. So let's assume that you create a hatch pattern in drafting. You cannot rotate it, unfortunately. But model, you can actually rotate. I'll show you how to do that later on. Pretty easy. All right. Uh, one thing that always gets to people is the material hand with the hand you see that there's always a zero or one or multiple number uh, if it's zero it means that that material is unique but if it's one it means that you have two materials sharing the same thing if you have 14 it means that 14 materials sharing the same thing just keep in mind okay so you always want to look at that zero or 14 or whatever number because what happens is that if you start modifying this material that 14 other materials can change <laughs> okay just be aware. Uh, there's a way you can actually duplicate it. I'm just going to show you later on how, to, uh, how that's done. Okay, let's do a demo. I'll close that out. Yeah, let's start with 19. So if you guys haven't used 19, uh, it's uh, we're we're getting to um, more people using it because you know Revit Autodesk has this licensing issue that it doesn't go back three releases. So I think the latest one is cut off at 17. So 17 is going to be obsolete in the next couple of years. So they recommend that user goes go into 18, 19, or 2020. All right, let's start with a new project. Let's. I'm just going to go into the most basic stuff. So let's create a fill region. Um, so how you create a fill region is that you go to annotate. Okay, you can go fill region. So this is where it, uh, it gets, uh, you got, always have this default materials that's coming out of the box. So to create a material, let's assume that I'm going to do this. And the next thing you want to do is that you want to create a type and duplicate it and just call this custom one, okay, for instance. And in here, you're getting to have two um, different types of hatches. So let's assume that I'm going to do horizontal. And for the background, I want to make it solid. Okay, the foreground is whatever is drawn at the front, and the background is whatever drawn to the back. So I always recommend if you want to add color to it, background is always going to be solid color, and the foreground is always going to be the hatches. Okay. So what you're going to get is this guy with the pink. Oh. Okay, but if you reverse it, let's assume that you're going to reverse it. Uh, that's it, it. it just makes sense if the uh, foreground is not solid. That's correct. Yeah, let's, let's do a reverse, right? It's just, just because sometimes people say, uh, what if I want to do the other way? Let's say brickwork and black. Does it do anything? It's going to be solid. So solid always overwrite the background. Okay, so just be aware. That's how uh, this both of this operate. Okay, so how you create your own hatch. So in here, what you have is that you have drafting and you have model. You see that right now the model is grayed out. If you want to create a hatch, you can create this new one. Okay. And in here, what, what happened is that it gives you a new pattern. What do you want to call it? So what you can do is that you can say, uh, this is going to be horizontal. And I want it to be 6 inches. Now, you can say basic. Custom basically allows you to insert in the hatch. OK, so right now, well, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to keep it the same. 6 inch horizontal. It has pa uh, parallels and cross hatch. So it's a very simple stuff. It's not nothing much. So I'll just go to these six inches. And here you got uh, you guys get like keep readable or align with uh, element. Okay. 
those are basically uh, if you're doing a lot of like details and stuff like that. If you if you means orient to view it means whenever you rotate the objects, it will rotate with it. Uh, actually, no, sorry. Uh, if you rotate the view box, it will basically change the hatch orientation. Keep it readable means that any hash that is um, not readable, they just keep it readable. Align with elements. This one is basically when you align stuff. Let's assume that you want to rotate this object, um, and it will align with it. Unfortunately, this only works in details. It will not work inside the project itself. I tried it with project. It always failed for some odd reason. Okay, the weird part about this is that, yeah, it doesn't have this model or drafting. Yeah, okay. You see that right now, I'm just trying to click on this and it just doesn't do it. Huh, very, very, very weird. Anyways, let's see what is going on. Yeah, the model got grayed out. Why is it? Yeah, that's very strange. You see that there's a model it grayed out. Typically what you can do is that you can click on the model. It will give you a blank page and then you can just start creating it. But this one for some reason just gives me creating the, well, could be a glitch, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, so here I'm just gonna go six inch, zero, uh, six inch horizontal. Okay, oops. That's why I was just say no pattern. Oh, there we go. You see that right now when I click on this? Was that your foreground background? Ah, okay. So I, I see what, what happens now. So in foreground, you can actually select both of them. Ah, very interesting. In the old days, it's either you get, uh, you can choose one or the other. You see that right now here, the, the background? You cannot do that. <laughs> Hopefully in the future, they'll fix this, right? Because sometimes you want to have like variations of stuff, right? So something to keep in mind if, if you if you want to know why the background wasn't able to do it, but foreground you can do it. So yes, so this is how you do it. Is that you go solid? Uh, let's assume that you want to be to be a con uh, you want to be um, gray sidings, and then you want to do model. You create this. Oh yeah, let's say tiles for instance. I'm going to use tile and use that, and the way you go. Okay. Next I'm going to talk about is that how you add in your own um, hatch pattern. So let's assume that you have a hatch pattern that you created from AutoCAD. Okay, so this is how you do it pretty easily. Uh, so in here what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to go in here. The first thing I'm going to do is that you can choose either drafting or model. Okay, click on custom. This is where you browse. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to my default folder location. Uh, content shortcut. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to have hatches and patterns. And here you're going to have drafting and model. Just keep in mind both of them are set differently from each other. So what you're going to do is that you're going to go uh, AutoCAD. Okay, This is basically from AutoCAD version um, that I've created. So I just place it in here. So what you can do is that you can choose whatever you want. Let's, uh, I'm going to use star for instance for drafting pattern. Now once you have a star this is very important. Um, in a pass, I always add scale. So assuming that this is a scale uh, one, I always add one. So that next time when you import in, you know the scale. In the newer version of Revit, I think 2020, you don't have to do this anymore. It's just that the older version, if you use it, what happened is that when you, when you say OK, and say OK and OK, and when you go back, this particular um, hatch, it's gonna get oh actually 2019 that's good okay so in older version this import scales it's gonna grade out yeah. so it, it's very annoying because sometimes you want to know what's the scale of the drawing and sometimes when user it's a good practice to put it in what scale you're in but in the new version 2019 or 2020 you don't have to do this anymore so this gets you a little bit much easier to modify your hatch okay so let's assume that you want it to be 0.5 and say okay, 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 there you go, half the scale. Okay, pretty easy, sort of. All right, so do you guys want to learn how to create uh, your own hatch, sort of? Okay. Like if you have a random shape. You yeah, you, if you want to create a random shape. Okay, so what you have to do is that, you, there's a couple of ways. There, you can pay apps. I, I've seen apps, uh, um, I think it was a hatch kid before it was free. 
now it requires you to pay for it so I don't recommend that but if you want a freebie version I will recommend you go into uh, HatchKit I, th I think there was an AutoCAD hatch tools creation or something I think it's uh, one of the oldest website uh, I remember downloading it if not I'll, I'll probably put it in a link so that you guys don't have to know uh, I'll probably put in a link just to uh, download a list routine that allows you to actually create your ha uh, hatch pattern like this okay I th yeah don't worry about this number most of the time you can go into the documents and start putting in and typing in your version I just don't recommend doing that because it's a lot of work so what I typically recommend doing is that I'll, I'll send you a link and I'll I'll just basically tells you where to access it so inside the um, hatch tool what I have here is that you, there is one called the hatch creation okay so first thing first is that there is a hatch boundary it tells you you need to do a box okay the next thing you want to do let's assume that you want to do a checker version uh, the next thing I would do is that I would create a snap now for those who still used to AutoCAD or never use AutoCAD I'm just gonna like do it very very short uh, very quickly is that when you insert in uh, your um, hatch right the list routine is usually you use uh, AP for upload okay the list routine is going to be in one of these so what you're going to do is that you're going to click on content and add and then this is where you're going to basically go okay I think it's called hatch kit I'm not sure I'm just going to go find it yeah it's the call hatch maker there we go good that's the one and what you do is that when you hit open right it would basically load it in that plugin okay uh, once you load in that plugin I think the, the command is hatch kit but here I just made a create a shortcut for pull down menus and the ribbon so what you can do with this is that you can actually create this and say hatch boundary and there we go it'll, it'll just create a point so the next thing you want to do is that you have to use snap okay so use snap so that you can create your hatch let's just uh, assume that I want to create the middle of this come on mid to mid and you want to do mid to mid okay here I want to add X okay I want to add this X I want to add that X right there now you have to think about how hatch behave right right now this hatch if I turn this off oh I should delete that this is how it's gonna look repeating uh, like this is the first pattern and what happened is that if I copy this pattern over from this particular N to this particular N right it's gotta look like this when you do repeating so what you have to do is that you kinda have to tie the N, uh, loose N so assuming that this is a tile you want this side to have that repeating pattern then you kind of have to also draw in the edge right here okay draw an edge and draw an edge okay you have to use a line you cannot use polyline the minute you use polyline it would just crapped out once you satisfy with your pattern okay the next thing you want to do is that you go in here um, go to tools and go to hatch creation and say save to pattern so what it's going to do is that hit enter and select the pattern okay let's say this is my pattern briefly describe I just enter don't don't, don't bother telling what it is the next thing you want to do is that you want to put it in your desktop somewhere or put it somewhere you think you can find your hatch pattern so here I'm just gonna go into my via and say this is gonna be custom tile okay just give it a name simple name okay there we go it's gonna create that ha uh, custom hatch pattern now the next thing you want to do is that you want to go into the work okay there is custom tile and the only thing you have to add it in is that particular um, wood in there so here I'm just gonna go in and enter in drafting okay and let's assume that this is a drafting and save one I'm gonna do another one just copy this and paste it in and then I'm just gonna call this thing mod for model right 
Now, one thing to keep in mind is that hatch pattern is very finicky. So if you have custom tile mod, make sure that you have the same name. Okay, that's the only finicky about hatch pattern is that it has to have the same name. Uh, I believe that in the like when you use the same hatch pattern inside AutoCAD, it will tell you that if the name is different, it's not gonna pick it up. It's just just the AutoCAD rules, right? So I'm just basically keeping the AutoCAD rules with the uh, with the Revit. So here I'm just gonna say model. You do save. You go back to Revit. Okay, you go in here, click on drafting. So let's assume that I'm gonna go model. I'm gonna create new, custom, browse, and let's say I'm gonna go to desktop and say <coughs> mod. There we go, your tile looks sexy. So let's say I'm gonna go five. Okay, does it look good? Let's go 10, there we go, 20. All right, that looks good. Say okay. Okay, okay. There you go. That's you create your hatch. Okay? So it's very pretty basic stuff if you want to do it, but if you have like a lot of other hatches that you want to use, uh, I recommend I, I'll probably send you guys out with the shortcuts if you still guys still want it. Is uh, I create a shortcuts on a desktop so it's able uh, for you to access some of the content. So let's say content shortcut, you can hatch materials. Uh, you can use Revit Kid. I, I, I use Revit Kid because um, he has quite a bit of good patterns in there. So you can open it up. Uh, you can go in here. Actually, no, that's not what I want. Sorry. He has a pattern drafting. Is it in here? No, not here. It's the RFA file. Source. No, not here. Uh, it has a pattern, and what happened with this uh, graphics? Oh, sorry, it's by a depot. Uh, I believe he's under annotations 2019. There we go, pattern. That's what you want. You go click on open. So, what it has is that it has all this hatch pattern that you can use. If you like it, you can simply copy and pasting. So, all you need is that if you have like a custom hatch pattern, you say, oh, I need this. All I have to do is just copy it and paste it in here. And now that hatch pattern becomes part of this project. And in here, what you can do is that if you don't like this hatch pattern, I can say, okay, give me gypsum, give me wood pattern. And it also has a bunch of stuff in here, generic, okay? Hatch pattern, you notice that there's bunch of other stuff as well so if you like this kind of a stone pattern or this cut stone you can copy it go to level one paste it in here okay this is what I like and you can always do match property there we go okay it's pretty simple because all this hatch patterns been created by a user so it can actually use that custom hatch so if you need a certain one uh, let me know I'll help you and add it in to the project so I just want to vet it in a lot of this pattern so that user can just go in there and just use whatever hatch pattern they want to use. So there's a drafting version. There's also the model version as well. Okay, uh, someone created Revit Kid. If you don't know who he is, he's uh, he he creates a lot of tutorials. That's pretty good. So I, I usually check his stuff. But if you have other stuff that you want to use, um, yeah, it's a good resources. All right. So that's basically the hatch pattern. So let's go into more of the materials. Any question with the hatch? The, the hatch is not for Enscape. No. Okay. The question is that hatches are not for Enscape, unfortunately. It's basically if you're doing a lot of like a hidden views, um, let's say you want to do um, a wall here, right? And you want it to be, let's say, masonry. This one only appears in the hatch mode. The, the, the purpose of it is more to do with uh, 2D drafting. Like yeah, so if you're used to the old AutoCAD kind of um, uh, world, hatch is a huge component because it allows you to basically have materials that, that kind of like mimic material, but it's not a material. Mm -hmm. But once you get into the Revit side, it basically combines the two together uh, because what Revit has is that it has a, a system where 
each of them are attached to a material. Within the material itself, you have hatch pattern and you have materials. Okay? Is it the appearance or the render? Yes, the appearance is always going to be the render part. The interfere to them? Or is it the work for hatch is deal with 2D yes. and material with then case? That's and correct. Don't it's okay. It's okay, yeah. So, yeah, it's okay. Uh, so what happened is that the, the question you asked is that, okay, uh, the, the hatch material, the blocks, and the render materials are all separated, okay? It's basically just to make it appear, uh, let's say in 2D, this is what you want to get. And for 3D, this is what you're going to get. So it has this built-in form where 2D, it can appear differently than 3D. You can actually change this, like graphics, it doesn't have to be a block. You can make it into like a horizontal right like that and it doesn't affect this yeah okay a person work on the rendering and a person work on that's the correct 2D and we are sharing the same thing yes sharing the same board and mm -hmm. we can just easily destroy the work of another one yes that's very OCD. true yeah it's very easily uh, something to keep in mind is that if you're doing a lot of like uh, rendering and hatching and stuff like that just designate one person to do it don't like go in there and start mucking up somebody else's work because sometimes they have certain things that they want to get a look so it's it's better to, for people to just talk to each other and say what what hatch pattern you want to use now if you're not sure my recommendation always is that you duplicate it okay what happened is that you can always duplicate it and call it like um, you know this is gonna be metric or something just call it something now what happened is that once you create uh, this is a new type Okay, of material. However, if you click on this, you see that there's two. Okay, because what happens is that it shares with this guy and this guy. Okay, something to keep in mind. Now, if you want this to be a different hatch pattern or material, what you have to do is that you just have to say duplicate this asset. Okay, click on duplicate, it becomes zero. Okay. Now what you can do here is that once you duplicate that, then you can say, okay, this is a new material. I'm just going to go in, uh, call it something else. Let's say block. I'm just going to change that into that, and that's a new material. Okay? So that's how you do it. Inside, if you want to do the material, just copy it and then just, just say, I, this is what I want. All right, so here, and then when you click on realistic, this is what it looks like. And... Yes. Any questions so far with this? No? Okay. So let's say you want to create a custom material for this. How do you do it? Okay, that's one question that a lot of users always ask. Okay, so how do you create a custom material? So the first thing you want to do is let's assume that you want to create a custom. I would just say duplicate this and just say this is, a, um, this is like art wall. Okay. Within that art wall, I want to create a new material. Okay, I usually duplicate it and say this is going to be art wall. The first thing you would go, um, you could always use the default material, right? Appearances, metal, and stuff like that. But keep in mind, all of this asset has its own customized parameter. Okay, it's not going to give you everything. Uh, for example, if I change this to uh, glossy blue, right? You notice that the material, uh, the parameters are slim there's like virtually nothing in it right because they're very specific if I want to go like to the most default I always choose generic as the starting point right because generic is basically when I load that in you notice that you get more stuff out of this okay and in here what it says is that okay this is generic 6 so the first thing I would do is just change my color you can add an image let's say if I want to do a wall mural then this is where you go, uh, image. But you can also do wood as well if you want to customize all that stuff. Now keep in mind, uh, I've talked to Enscape guys. Uh, what they told me is that if you use one of this custom um, parameter or presets, it will not get recognized inside Enscape. So if you choose tile and you create like a brick using this method, once you put it inside Enscape, that brick material is not a brick material, just one layer of material. I tested it out with uh, Centrum Project. It just, yeah, it just becomes one material, right? It's whatever that image. So for this one, they recommend just use the image file, 
okay just keep in mind I just talked to the Enscape if you are using Enscape so in here uh, let's assume that I'm just gonna go into the internet and say I'm gonna go uh, mural let's say graffiti okay yeah that's that's good <laughs> sure let's go go in Okay, let's assume that this is what you want for your wall. Okay, so let's assume that I'm gonna go in here, download, and in here, what you're gonna do is that you're gonna go in, download. So I'm just gonna go deep modify, that's the one. I think that is, yeah, okay. So in here, what you could do is that there is a tile, okay, sizes, okay? In here, I'm just going to go in and choose the biggest size. If you know the height of the wall, it makes it very easy, right? So if you know, let's assume that this is going to be um, 10 feet. So I'm just going to say 10 feet. It's going to do that and say done and done. Now, you can also do a uh, bump, right? Just give it a texture. So here, I'm just going to go bump, choose the same one. Again, you want to make it 10 feet. Okay, you can do a mount. You see that right now you can do negative or a positive. What this does is that it increases the bump map. Do we need to put black and white for that? Not necessarily, but what you could do is that you can always invert this image if you want to make it look like that. And when you, let's say I'm going to hit OK. Okay, that's what it looks like. But if you want to do Enscape, let's see what it looks like. So this is why like, you kind of have to experiment, okay? Uh, one of the things that user always asks is that how do you adjust it so that you know the map is always going to be you know one side or the other because what happened with uh, Revit is that when you put it like this it always wants to do it in a center mode okay there's a trick you can actually align your hatch pattern uh, I'm gonna show it once like okay so this is what it looks like ha 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 <laughs> so you notice that the bump map <laughs> it's messed up right it, a uh, bump is basically increase the uh, texture map so you see um, yeah you basically what you do is that yeah when you look when you zoom in closer it has this uh, sort of like you know fake depth, fake depth. yeah shadow <laughs> line or something okay so that that was a disaster so you're gonna go back so it's almost like hatch pattern is always going to be experimenting okay it's it's going to be um, art wall okay experimenting uh, this one I'm just gonna say do not invert the image and when you say okay that's what I like about Enscape is that it's kind of like a trial and error okay yeah I think the bump is too much yeah if, if the bump is too much the um, it always does this right so here let's see I'm gonna go back it's all about experimenting. There's no, no technique. So you're going to go back, go to bump. Oh, here we go. Just make it like, uh, let's say 10. Yeah, it will adjust or not adjust. Yeah, sometimes it does a good job. Sometimes it just, yeah, it's a pitiful job here. <laughs> Next time I should choose a better, better, better hatch pattern. But it's all about trial and error, so you just have to experiment how, how it looks like. Okay, how do you adjust the, the patterning and all that stuff? So the one thing um, I'm noticing in the hatch, right, let's assume that this is in line, it looks like that. The one thing I would typically do if you want to create like a mural and adjust accordingly, uh, what I would do is that First, you have to know how big is your hatch pattern, right? Let's assume that that thing is 10 feet by 10 feet. Then what I would do here is that you create one that's like 10 feet by 10 feet. So that's kind of like your mural height. And say this is cross 10 feet by 10 feet and do zero. Okay, let's assume that this is what you want. And what you could do here is that if you want to adjust it, just adjust it this way. And what happened is that the hatch pattern is going to change. 
You see that right now? Oh, okay. So, okay. What you do is that you hit a tab, right? Yeah, you can hit a tab. So this only works for model. So if you want to rotate this, let's assume that you want to rotate this, like this is what you want. Then what happened is that when you go into the realistic, this is what it looks like, and Enscape will respect that. So there we go. So that's how you adjust it. Okay, just just the technique. If you if you really want to adjust how this is going to look. Okay, that's basically the simple stuff. Now there's a couple couple of good features inside the, the Revit. Let's assume that you want to illuminate this picture, okay? What you can do is that in the material, same thing, uh, you will add a light, okay? But you can actually say self-illuminated, okay? Uh, you can make it like a dim glow LCD panel, okay? Just give it a glow. And when you hit OK, what it does inside Enscape is that Oh, it's brightened up. But when you go into Nightfall, so it basically it has this LCD quality panel. So if you want to kind of illuminate your art and stuff like that for nighttime, this is a kind of like the cheat cheat way to kind of do it. So you just say self illumination. And during the day, people? During the day, just basically just, yeah, when you go to, to the day, let's just, uh, yeah, it looks fine. Okay? So that's how you do it, basically, if you want to self-illuminate it. Now, if you want to add tint, let's say, for example, you want to go in here, go Art Wall, go to Appearances. There is one called the Tint for Transparency. Well, Transparency, you guys know, it's just a glass. Uh, cutout. Uh, cutout is an interesting one. It's because uh, if you have a solid and void, let's say, so assume that you have a black and white, you can actually take out certain parts out of the map so when you render it it looks like part of it got cut out but for this one I don't have anything so I cannot show you but like think of it as a mesh right like, like when you look at the uh, material called the mesh uh, yes yes so it's a cutout so if you look at the mesh version right um, yeah this one right here okay the mesh has a cutout so what it does is that it basically say part of it is uh, Invisible, some of them are not invisible, so that's a cutout, what it means. Okay, so for a tint, you could say, okay, I want it to be red, for instance. Okay. So what happened inside Enscape is that you're going to have red wall. Okay, so just a just couple ways you could just experiment with it. Um, very, It's very fluid. Now, one, one of the things that I always... Um, really bothered by Revit is that it doesn't have the ability to conform to shape, like organic shape. Uh, one in particular, uh, I'm just going to show you guys um, one of the, one of the kind of like the sample project that I've done. I, I should just close out of this uh, and escape. So one of the projects that I'm kind of like experimenting is this uh, space frontier. Now, if you're doing a globe, let's say, ex assuming that you want to do like a, a, a globe shape, right? Uh, the problem with the globe, okay, this let's assume that this is a globe with uh, Earth, right? And so here, you notice that the material is continuous, correct? Now, by default, this is not possible inside Revit. So what you have to do is that for this, I have to split them up into two halves, okay? Because one, once you want to wrap this around, it's not going to have this perfect clean wrap, okay? Because your map is going to be distorted. So what I have to do is that I have to cut half and put one material as a, a different material. So each one is going to have like, okay, 180 and 180, um, 180 and 0. And in here, I'm just going to go in here and see. Okay, so this one, Earth 8K. You see the size, right? The sample size is huge. So what I did here is that it's a tile. I just put in like whatever size and then I do offsetting. So a lot of this is trial and error, okay? You cannot figure out how to like align it or do it correctly is very very difficult so this one you kind of have to spend like at least an hour or something just to adjust it to get the right portion and this is why I don't like about Revit is that it doesn't have the ability to say 
this is your UV map, adjust where you want it, and then your wrap is going to be basically the same thing. Except we just got this positioning. It's it's a very cumbersome way. Uh, hopefully in the future there's a way you can actually do this much better. But uh, this is one of my complaints about uh, Revit is that it doesn't have this. So for for you to achieve this globe, you kind of have to do a lot of this tinkering around, okay, just to get the perfect map. Okay, so this is how I'm able to achieve this. Uh, so you can go realistic. And you can also do moon if you have like a high res. Uh, this one I downloaded a texture map like 8K. You can download it and then create your own globe. And yeah, once you get the texture map correctly, all you have to do is just say duplicate that texture map and apply a globe, whatever, and then you get this type of globe. Any questions so far? Uh, I have a question you had before about the routine. You applied on the material. Yes. <coughs> is it the same as paint? Uh, we applied on the oh paint. Paint we applied on the on the facade. Uh, uh no, it's different. Like this one, the paint is very different. So what happened with the paint is that this is kind of like your customized version of um, like you just apply whatever you want. Like for example, here I'm just gonna go into my where is my modify okay let's assume that I want to split this material up into different segment let's say here and I want this to be painted so what I go in here is I'm gonna go paint and let's say I want to use soldier course like that so what this does is that this side is gonna be different that's gonna be different so you can have the surface but you can have different different kind of material is that what you're talking about yeah yeah. And how we deal with that? How, yeah, because that uh, is tricky for the, I think, for the feature of um, yes. Enscape. Yeah. Well, for Enscape, it doesn't really matter if you do this, but the only thing you kind of have to keep in mind is that um, if you're doing a lot of material, if the if the height ever changes or someone actually edit the wall, you see that it's still respected, mm -hmm. right? Uh, okay, which tool? So what I use is this guy right here. Okay, split face. Okay, you split face, you just say select that, and you can say, okay, I want this to be a hole. Okay, and then here, I'm just going to go in here and say ceramic tile. And what happened is that Revit, uh, Enscape is going to respect the hole, hopefully. Oh, I'll get out of there. Did it respect it? Oh yeah, they respect it. If you apply one hash to the whole surface and then you split the face, mm -hmm. uh, can you re rotate the other hash? Yes, you can. Okay. The question is that if you have like a ramp, for instance, let's say I'm going to do a ramp. I'm going to get rid of this. I should close out of this. Okay. Let's assume that you're doing a ramp. Okay, mm -hmm. a building ramp. Um, as a let's say one meter okay but this one I want to duplicate it and call it ramp and in this ramp you're gonna have let's let's take a concrete right concrete place in gray duplicate it I'm just gonna say this is parking and in your foreground you're going to have model and I'm gonna go create say six inch um, vertical or horizontal sorry so here I'm just gonna say six inch and say zero zero and then okay and okay here what you have is you have six inches now if you want to split it so what I'm going to go in here is that I'm going to click on here and say I'm going to go midpoint of this and midpoint of that. Now, if I rotate this, will it rotate? No, it won't. Okay. Now, how do you solve this problem? Is that you would say paint it. And you want to paint it with ramp. Let's call it ramp. Oops. Parking. I think I call it parking. Okay, so let's say parking. All you have to do is just paint it once. 
you can rotate this and say this is 45 degree and rotate this 45 degree so they are going to be independent so all you have to do is split it up paint one side and rotate it so that's how you do it yeah yeah that's that's how I would do it if you're doing a parking ramp this is the perfect solution for that okay because I know the parking ramp people would tend to do is that they would use uh, hatch pattern like a fill region it's like you know don't do that just use this this is much better because this is re realistic kind of a thing and that's correct yes yes that's correct yeah you just be, be, you have to be careful because sometimes what tends to happen is that Sometimes new user they don't understand. They say, "Oh, what is this? Oh, it doesn't matter." And you delete it. You delete the thing, right? It, that's the one thing I, I don't like about you know this sort of a uh, setup is because it's so easy for user to delete it if they don't understand what it is. Okay, um, there's one more thing I'm probably going to talk about is just the last thing is the family itself. You can actually apply. Let's assume that when you create a family, uh, you can apply different different surface paints so that this surface is going to have different material that surface has a different material so here I'm just gonna do like a generic a generic model uh, let's do a vase okay so let's do one I'm gonna use revolve okay the one thing you could do is I'm just gonna do a axis Uh, I'll, I'll just do it one to one so it's much easier so here what you can do is that you can actually let's say I'm gonna create a vase that is going to be it's gonna have like this sort of like a bump in shape like that well, actually I should give it like that okay let's assume this is your vase it's got to look like that okay it looks it looks <laughs> this looks like a planter now what you can do here I'm just gonna go realistic oh no actually let's go constant you can actually put in the material for differences so here what I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna create a bunch of materials um, let's see go to create here I'm just gonna go create material one that's going to be material. Okay, it's by category. And I create another one, material two. Material two, material. Let's say I'm going to create a material three. Oops. Okay, material three. Now, what you can do is that you could give it like a general material let's assume that this is going to be the general material material one okay I'm gonna give like all of this color so I'm just gonna duplicate this color one uh, color one I'm just gonna give it like uh, paint let's say wall paint aquamarine okay that's color one and second color I'm just gonna duplicate this and say this is color two and within that color, I'm just going to, again, do the same thing. Just go wall paint. Uh, let's go, sure, that one. Color two, duplicate it. Color three. Now, you notice I didn't duplicate the, the material because I'm just using the whatever is the default material. Now, if you one one of the things I always tell users to do is that use the default material so that when you transfer from one Revit model to your consultants they're all going to be using the same thing since all of this appears in their library as well so try to use whatever is out of the box as much as possible okay let's say that's color three. Oh, color two and then this color three All right, so in here, what you could do is that you can actually say, give me a paint. You notice that there's material one, material two, material two parameter. So you can say, okay, for this one, I want it to be this material. For this material, I want it to be this material and say done. And what happened is that, oops, I forgot to do something. Is that I forgot to, yeah, always do this. Like if you, if you hate the grays, 
I always say use render appearances. If I'm too lazy, I just say use the render material. Uh, go in here, do the same thing. And then when you hit OK, you notice that, oh, OK. Part of it is green. So and then you can go back again and say, I want this to be material 2. And you could say this is material 3, material 1, and et cetera, et cetera. So you can actually do a funky shape. Uh, do you have to paint to, to divide the surface? You don't have to paint. Uh, you could don't have to divide it. You can just say, OK, just do a funky color like this. Right. So if you ever want to kind of like use paint, this is probably the best method. If you have like, um, there we go. Yeah. So if you're doing a lot of like uh, artwork and stuff like that, and you have like your own variations, yeah, I just don't know what to pick. <laughs> there we go. And then you, on the inside as well, so you can say, okay, this one I want it to be this color. I want it to be this color, and then I want it to be whatever color. Let's say two. There we go. And Enscape will respect that. So let's say assume that I'm going to use Enscape. So you could do it like a art form, like really like you know, different color, and all you have to do is just say this material, this material, this material, just paint, 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 paint. Ooh. There we go. <laughs> so, yeah, it's an alien spacecraft, right? So you can actually do that as well. Okay, just paint it, you know, put that cherry material, pick, pick that. It's all family. So that's the nicest thing about this is that uh, you can change color. So let's assume that uh, in this particular case, I have uh, color four. So let's say color four. I'm going to change that to let's assume that I'm going to use wood uh, let's use bamboo okay say okay say okay and then I believe that will be respected yeah. so yeah you can change materials so add that materials and it works great so this is how I would do it inside a family because what happened with families a lot of users it tends to build like pieces by pieces by pieces and say apply this material apply this material or you can just build one material and say paint this part going to be this color paint this part you just add a parameter basically and then what it does is that it allows you to basically uh, form it to whatever you want so how does it recognize that this part is different from the other one Oh, how do you recognize it? Okay, so what you have to do is that you kind of have to plan it out first, right? So here, what I did is I created three materials in the paint. In the paint, so what you do here is that when you go to paint, this is where you say material one parameter, material two parameter, material three parameter. You just say paint whatever you want, okay? So the first parameter, you could say, okay, I want this to be this, this one I want to be that, and then third materials I want to be that. Okay, so that's how you kind of mix match kind of a thing. Okay. Any questions so far? No. Now, one of the limitations of uh, Revit is that you know sometimes when you do cloth, right, it just it just will not work. I'll, I'll show you an example of the reason behind this, right? So here I'm just gonna show you this uh, character. Uh, I know Frozen's out. <laughs> so everybody say everybody loves Frozen, right? So. Uh, so what I did is that I, I built this um, also inside Revit and what happened is that I'm trying to get the cloth to look right. Unfortunately that's the limitation of Revit material is that the cloth is not doesn't look good, right? It just it just needs something in there because what happened is that it will take the material, but the problem is, is that it it stretches the material and you're not getting the material to be really correct, like uh, uniform, unfortunately. So you're gonna get this really weird um, let's say for example here you notice that the material does not lined up it looks good but you know it's kind of stretches you see that it doesn't conform to that so that's kind of like the limitation of Revit there's nothing much you can do um, probably in the future releases uh, so how did this work in Enscape so let's say assuming that you have an ALSA uh, you want to put that inside your did you that? yes I did no, so no yeah you can do that fail. yeah you can do that So basically, yeah, you can you can actually do it, but it's just that the material itself, uh, that's this is the limitation of Revit. There's not that much you can do about it. You can model every single trinkets and stuff like that, but it's just not worth it. 
So I just apply material. This is the limitation. So I just go on to tell users that, okay, if you uh, work for Autodesk or you want Autodesk to change this, this is one of the wish lists I wish to be put in for the next version is to normalize all this material because yeah, it, it is a problem. But the rest is okay, right? You can model it to ha uh, heart's content, but just uh, just keep in mind this transparency sometimes yeah looks looks good for the fabric, but it just it stretches. That's the problem. There, um, there's Enscape can't solve that. I don't think Revit can solve it. That's the limitation that we're dealing with. All right, any questions so far? Do you do that with your kids? Uh, uh Revit. <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, I just built this as a test project, right? It's saying that, okay, if, if I could build something, right, can you build a human figure inside Revit? Because one of, that's the biggest challenge inside Revit is that you cannot build uh, organic stuff. But I kind of experiment with it a little bit, so, and then it worked, well. it worked pretty well. There you go. Yeah, there we go. And then um, inside, inside this Revit, this is what it looks like. Um, yeah, the funny thing about it is that that eyelashes... It, yeah, that eyelashes is about 10 megs. Yeah, 10 megabytes just for that eyelashes, right? We, no, well, what I did with the eyelashes, uh, I should show you guys uh, how the eyelashes was built, is that it is basically a, um, uh, I use adaptive component, right? So in here, the faces, um, and then when I go inside, each of this eyelashes is actually adaptive component. You see one, two, three, and one, two, three. Like if you keep building all this thing up, this whole thing is actually 10 megabytes. <laughs> Just for this modeling, I was like, wow, like Autodesk needs to um, optimize a lot of this modeling because you know, like people do this quite a bit, right? And if you don't do this, it's like, how do you, how are you gonna get it work? Right, so you can actually build crazy stuff inside Revit, but it's just that sometimes the modeling tool is not there yet. Right, there's this is a couple of stuff that can be can be improved in order to get it work. But that's how I do it. Eyelashes, it's just it's a it's an adaptive component that you can just pick one point, pick two point, pick three point, it will just conform to that shape, and that's how you build your eyelashes. Yeah, hopefully that uh, that's more fun entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> that you can actually build uh, faces, right? So, yeah, hopefully that kind of gives you an idea that Revit, you can actually build a lot of stuff inside Revit. Did you find a material of skin? You could build it? I did, but I just, when I actually put it in, the problem is, is that sometimes the skin has this imperfection. And what happens is that when you're trying to wrap it around the face, it looks like one part looks right, one the other part just doesn't look right. It's just that skin has this uniform formity right but revit just doesn't do that it just stretches the material one part looks like pale the other looks like it's correct so i just give up just use paint and use peach <laughs> and that's pretty much how what you can do so that's the unfortunate thing about materials inside revit is that it will stretches if you built like really complicated shape so there you go. Hopefully you enjoy that. Um, yeah, if you have any questions or anything, yeah, just let me know. Thank you.